good morning let us resume our discussion uh, before i uh, discuss uh, the contents of this class what did we discuss in the last class any couple of points what were we discussing in the last classes our last class so we were discussing about uh, invariant feature transform uh, where you know uh, we can find uh, key points that are invariant to scale and uh, we have uh, used various uh, medical uh, you know uh, probably this question uh, how do you say the question kernel set on that but in two dimensions and also we took the difference of it in order to find those invariant key points okay so we are looking at more robust key points uh, across the images uh, and across the scales so the as we have discussed in the initial classes what becomes more important is to find uh, um, the key points that are stable across scales are very dominant in a particular scale uh, and identifying the key points with uh, a particular scale also helps us to match them better see what happens is uh, when we match the uh, different images say two diff when we want to match uh, across images what will happen so if you have actually some uh, some objects here okay you have some other objects here okay so uh, what we wish to do is we want to see whether this key point and this key point is same or not when we want to do that uh what usually happens is this key point and this key point when we see and uh, so this one one and then two two we just want to check whether they are same or not when we want to do such things what usually happens is uh there is a reasonable match but there is an uncertainty also associated with it so if you would like to match with a, a better level of certainty then we have to see at which scale a particular key point is existing in image one is at the same scale the other key point is also existing or not that will help us to not only check the key points across scales but also to see whether the key points that are matched are of same scale or not to have a more confidence in match okay so such things also will be helpful uh, and the uh, further what we have discussed is we would like to have see, uh, key points to be identified irrespective of orientation irrespective of scale and irrespective of photometric and geometric variations in the image so we would like to have the feature feature key point identification and feature extraction across all these different uh, um, scenarios uh, so given that we are discussing about uh, scale invariant feature transform okay let's continue our discussion so in the previous class we have discussed that scale invariant feature transform has four steps mainly the first step starts with uh, identifying the key points localizing the key points okay and uh, the next step is to localizing the key points is the first step okay and then the second step is eliminate the outliers and, and edge points so what we do is once we identify several key locations as possible key points what will happen all may not be the really uh, good key points for matching across images okay so we would like to see which are very prominent key points or robust key points that can be matched across images so that is the next step the third step is what we would like to do is say uh, we would like to associate an orientation to the key point that means say for example if previously what we have seen if we have a key point okay so one thing that we have discussed is same thing we want to like at look at at different scales okay look the same thing at different scales okay that's what we are doing in the first uh, uh, discussion this is helpful to see is it a key point which is uh, prominent across scales when why don't only look at scale means say there are two interpretations of scales that we have discussed in the last class scale is looking at the information at different resolutions okay so if you would like to look at whole information say for example if i look at the whole, this much information and want to see whether key point is significant or not or if i look at only small region and see if this is 
prominent or not. If I look at this much region, okay, at a stretch, and then I would like to see whether this key point is prominent or not. Looking at this much region means, assume that if I convolve with a Gaussian of that much region, or more importantly, with a Laplacian of that much region, okay, Laplacian of Gaussian of that much region, will this key point appear or not? Okay, why we are discussing uh, the Laplacian of Gaussian? As we discussed in the last class, okay, the uh, um, Gaussian has a shape of uh, uh, directly a bell curve, okay? Whereas Laplacian of Gaussian, if you see, it has this kind of curve. This is referred to as Mexican hat, okay? So if you see between the uh, Gaussian and the Laplacian of Gaussian, this is La Gaussian, okay? And then this is Laplacian of Gaussian. What is the difference? Gaussian is anyway in X and Y, as you know, the expression and so on. Uh, so we, we have shown here only G of X, but this can be G of X or G of X comma Y. Okay, usually in images, it is G of X comma Y only. Then consider G of X um, for all um, orientations. Okay, or if you uh, make one G of X uh, like this in like, uh, and then you uh, rotate it over 360 degrees, what you get is G of X comma Y roughly. And you can have in G of X comma Y, the variance in X direction and Y direction can be different. Okay, it need not be a bell, regular bell. It can be a bulged bell, okay, something like that. So Laplacian of Gaussian is what? So it is second derivative of uh, L of X comma Y, we can consider in two dimensions. Uh, so it is dou square by dou X square plus dou square G by dou Y square. Okay, if we consider both X and Y, this is what is Laplacian of Gaussian. This will have a Mexican hat kind of uh, uh, look, uh, shape, and what it does, if I convolve with this, what is that I'm highlighting? Whenever the information in the center pixel, okay, is different from the neighboring pixels, okay? So that's what I'm highlighting. If this is some uh, different intensity and the remaining pixels are of different intensity, that's what I'm highlighting. Let it be the center pixel may be positive and the remaining pixels may be negative or center pixel may be negative and remaining pixels may be positive. That's what I'm highlighting. As you can see here, this is positive, strong positive, Okay, and this is strong negatives. Okay, so this will help us to locate <coughs> wherever the variation of information is there across all directions. Okay, so this is the other way of identifying the corner points or key points. And this, if we, if this is a function of sigma, this is also a function of sigma. Now, if I change the sigma, what happens if the sigma is uh, small, a sigma small, Okay, then how does it look like? So this will become a narrower Gaussian. Appalachian of Gaussian. Okay. So this is with small sigma. And this is with wider sigma. So height may be high here. Uh, when the, uh, say if we consider energy is constant, then the height will be high. Okay. So hope you understand. The variation with sigma, how does this Laplacian of Gaussian look like? And then what is the implication of it? If I convolve with this, this is LOZ1, okay? And then this is LOZ2, assume that. And then in an image, as we discussed in the last class, if we have actually a small red blood cell somewhere, okay? And then uh, white blood cells uh, somewhere, okay? These are all the white blood cells. And then uh, we have also red blood cells. Then what will happen? If you would like to look at the red blood cells, we should convolve with which Gaussian, which L1 or L2? With which of the LOZ we have to convolve to highlight the red blood cells? Red blood cells means the L1 red L1. With the L1. L1. Oh, highlight it. If we convolve with with what? L1 or L2? L1. 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 Okay. And these can be highlighted by convolving with what? L2. Yeah. L2. Okay. So this is 
thus what it happens if we see the corner points say same corner point here it is very thin corner point sometimes what happens in natural uh, objects okay you may have actually something like this right so it's it's also a corner point but it is at slightly bigger scale okay as yes, compared to here it you can consider it may be identified at a bigger scale okay like that so at different scales the corner points can or the key points can exist and those can be easily or essentially identified by convolving gaussians or laplacian gaussians at different scales that is the beauty of this laplacian or gaussian operator and applying this for corner detection i uh, hope this is clear this is what we have discussed in the initial uh, discussion that is identifying or localizing key point okay so we are identifying where the key points are or localizing where the key point is in a given image so this is the first step what is second step see when we do this as we mentioned to perform this we construct a scale space okay this is referred to as scale space uh, so how do we construct we change the sigma not like the variance sigma not sigma 1 sigma 2 and so on okay where gradually we increase the scales so that we have the uh, features extracted or the corners extracted at different scales and these four put together are some of these four five put together are considered as one octave okay these are all put together is one octave sigma not to uh, say sigma 4 here now what we do we perform a down sampling why are we performing down sampling to further look at a very fine information see if we convolve with a bigger image 100 thousand plus thousand image with a laplacian of gaussian of uh, say whatever we are looking at a bigger details or a coarser details when we make it say 1000 cross 1000 to 500 cross 500 and 250 cross 250 we are looking at as uh, uh, they in 250 cross 250 we may be looking at a smaller smaller details but when you zoom them okay they will be uh, bigger details so it's the uh, uh, other way so what happens is if we look at a small uh, information in 200 cross 200 250 cross 250 so if you are identifying a key point here okay in in 1000 cross 1000 okay this is a bigger key point this is this much point okay so what we do is in this scale we we get the uh, say in this scale we get the coarser details in this scale we get the finer details see whatever is very small already here what will happen in 250 cross 250 it will disappear almost okay it will not be there so you can't uh, you can't extract that as a key point in 250 cross 250 okay so here we highlight here we identify the finer details okay and here we get the coarser details coarser details because the finer in 250 cross 250 will be coarser in 1000 cross 1000 okay so we are get we uh, to get details across different scales from finer to coarser we bring different resolutions okay of course we can also do that by convolving with different different gaussians starting from sigma 1 say if sigma 1 is say 2 for example okay sigma not is 2 i can keep increasing it to 4 8 okay and then 16 or whatever i can increase in some manner and go even up to say um, 64 plus 64 and so on that means sigma value i can keep increasing to a larger value and keep convolving at the 1000 plus 1000 itself to get the different scale information of key points scale in key points at different scales but what is the issue what the um difficulties we are doing with a very big gaussian and convolution with a gaussian takes lot of operations okay so if i want to convolve with a gaussian of 64 sigma value then usually what is the non zero region in a gaussian so if i consider a gaussian itself even in gaussian the non zero region is 3 sigma right so minus 3 sigma to plus 3 sigma so it is 6 sigma roughly so it is close to 6 times 64 
which is uh, say close to 360 or whatever, okay, close to 400. So I'm taking each convolution at each to find a key point. I'm looking at 400 cross 400 region and performing conversion with a Laplacian of Gaussian I am supposed to convolve. Okay, instead of convolving the Laplacian of Gaussian, the suggestion that is given by David Lowy is mm, Laplacian of Gaussian is equal to, or scale normalized Laplacian of Gaussian is equivalent to, okay, a uh, mm, difference of Gaussian. So you can instead of finding convolution with Laplacian of Gaussian, which is difficult, okay, expression for Laplacian of Gaussian itself is difficult, uh, and then conversion with it is also difficult. So compared to that, uh, you can consider this. A difference of Gaussian. If you would like to make a difference of Gaussian, which is this, okay, simply what we do, we can convolve with the Gaussians itself. These are all the convol Gaussians only. And then making the difference to get the difference of Gaussians. These, in fact, are equivalent to convolving with the Laplacian of Gaussian. Hope you understand that. Okay, that's how in this across scales now, if I see a maxima, then I consider it as a scale point uh, or a key point. Oh, interest point. So what did we say? If I consider if this has to be a key point, I look at three cross three region in the down scale and up scale. Okay, that means scale one, um, one scale ahead or higher scale, one lower scale. Okay, lower scale means sigma smaller. Upper scale means sigma higher. That's how we are just considering. And across these three cross three cross three, okay, if this center pixel is the maxima or minima also, because why we are considering maxima or minima? In Laplacian Gaussian, it doesn't matter whether it is a maxima or minima. Both are key points. Okay, this can be positive side. This can be on the negative side as well. Okay, if I, cons if I consider like this, this can be on the negative side, right? So I don't bother it is maxima or minima. So across this three cross three cross three, 27 cross uh, 27 pixels, if this center pixel is maxima, then I consider it as a R minima. I consider it as a key point. It's not unlike where we perform uh, gradient descent or something like that. We are not looking at the maxima or minima only. In this scale space, maxima or minima both corresponds to strong key points. Okay. And that scale space is constructed like that. And as we mentioned, that can also be constructed with different uh, values of sigma, convolving with different values of Laplacian of Gaussian or Gaussian. Okay. But the problem is, as I mentioned, you need to look at a large region. Instead, as we mentioned, if you downsample it, if for course details to identify, it is not necessarily to have this much of information. Okay, you can bring them to a smaller dimension. So instead of 64 here, if I want to identify the same point here, okay, what I need is sigma with one, one fourth, okay, of the size. One fourth by one fourth. In fact, this will be of the size, okay, one by 16. So to whatever the region I look at with 64 sigma here, okay, is equivalent to uh, looking at information sigma k is equal to uh, 64 by 16, which is equal to 4 here. Hope you understand the point. Uh, because in this region, if you see whatever is say, whatever is there in this region, uh, that when I downsample by four times, here it is four times, right? the same information will occur in 1 by 4, 1 by 4 region. Okay, 1 by 4, 1 by 4 of this. Okay, so it is enough to convolve with 1, 1 by 4, 1 by 4 of sigma. Okay, and then sigma equal to 4 is good enough. Hope you understand. That is the advantage. Instead of looking at 400, I can look at now 400 by 16, that's close to 25 pixels. Okay, so convolving with here 25 pixels, okay, um, area, here sigma this is equivalent to 25 pixels. Here it is equivalent to 400 pixels. Okay, so that is the reason why we form different octaves. I mean, we make the downsampling happen and again find the difference of Gaussians. As I mentioned here, this is a different octave. Okay. So if you have any questions before I further move on, you can ask now. This is regarding the key point identification. Okay, I will show some of the slides to make you understand better. Probably I will show some of the slides and we will come back for the discussion on eliminating the outliers or 
uh, edge points and so on. This process will give us a lot number of key points. Now the next question is how do I eliminate and get only the key points which are of uh, really corresponds to corners or which can be matched very robustly across scales. Okay. And then subsequently how to assign the orientation such things we'll discuss. Okay, so as I mentioned, this is by uh, Professor David Lowy in 2004. This is the highest cited paper in computer vision before deep learning uh, um, era. And the motive for this is we need to find out key points, okay, which are easy for us to get hold of the image information and that can be used to match across different orientation scales uh, and uh, different uh, views, different uh, intensity variations in anywhere in other images, okay? Because all the time we will not be imaging track like this. There can be several kinds of tracks as well, okay? And we would like to get hold of at least some common points to say that it is a track. And also to say it is same track or not, we may need to make a little more confidence in terms of those common points or the key points or need to have more number of key points that are uh, strongly matched. Okay, so this uh, problem of identifying or detecting the same object again or recognizing the object again requires first feature ex key point detection and feature extraction. That is where to look for the information and what to look at those regions. Okay, both put together will give us the detail of is this object same or not. Okay, this, ha this much has to go on to say, to confirm that the object is same. And this is as well as the, feed, the dense matching based methods or template batching based matching based methods wherein template batching based methods you may take the whole uh, template here okay and then here here also you may take the whole template okay and then you try to match whether this template and this template is same or not that is the template batching based matching based methods okay so if the dimensions are different so if this is 100 cross 100 and 80 cross 80 uh, then what we do we scale one of them both of them to same dimensions and match that's all we do and orientation we know that initially this is of this orientation okay and this we know that this is of this orientation we correct the orientation and then match in template matching okay so if we correct for the scale we correct for the orientation and match but across the both whole images or the whole templates okay in template matching Whereas in key point matching, we don't bother about uh, matching the whole image. We get hold of key point one, two, three, okay, uh, and so on. So we get hold of several key points. And then we uh, try to match across uh, mm, different, uh, mm, different key points. Okay, so we try to match which key point is a good match for which key point. Okay, and so on. So that's what we are discussing. For that, as I mentioned, there are four main steps in scale invariant feature transform. What is first identifying the key points, okay, and uh, localization of the key points. So what we see is that actually, as I mentioned, identifying the robust key points is also involves like precisely locating the region of like the key point. That means if I identify in a key in a big image coarsely that this is the region of the key point, but the actual key point may be slightly around it. So I want to exactly localize the key point. Okay, that is, a, that is also important. So is it key point is robust or not? And is it well localized or not? Precisely am I looking at the key point? Because if I look at the patch around this, the description will be different. And the patch if I around the, the exact key point, the description may be different. Okay, when I match it, it influences whether my localization is accurate or not will, um, will affect the accuracy of the matching. So I would like to exactly localize, accurately localize the key points. Of course, also would like to remove the outliers, edge points and so on. Okay, these are the main steps for localizing and identifying and localizing key points. Okay, robust key points. Robust means which can be matched across scales, which can be matched across orientations, views, intensity variations, and so on. And then the third step is for these key points, can I associate a orientation? Say this key point, can I associate this dominantly oriented in this direction? If I, uh, if I have a key point, something like this, okay, can I say that this key point, okay, is, uh, mm, 
Okay, this key point is oriented like this. Okay, this key point is it oriented like this? Can I can I indicate uh, dominant orientation of the key point? Okay, that's the other thing. Uh, so that how does it help? So this will help me because see if I understand that this is the orientation of the key point, then what I can do? Say in the other image also, if the same object is there, but object is there something like this. Then what I will do? I will try to pick the uh, same key point here, but this key point orientation is like this here. So in this, the key point orientation is like this. In this image, it is like this. So what I want to do here, it is say minus 45 degrees. Okay, and then here it is minus uh, 60 degrees. So what I will do? I will correct first for the orientation and then try to match. Rather than may, or I take a descriptor about this with a normalized orientation. Okay, instead of taking without orientation, I take a feature descriptor with respect to that orientation so that it is a orientation normalized descriptor. Okay, that means irrespective of how the object is rotated, I describe the same key point in the similar way. Okay, that can be done if I know the orientation assessment, assignment and then the normalization with respect to the orientation. And also, of course, it will also help us to compute the HPOG, histogram of orientation uh, detector, uh, uh, descriptor in a better way. And finally, that's what is the key point description. Okay, so these are the steps. So as I mentioned, the Laplacian of Gaussian, if you convolve on an image, this is how the Laplacian of two-dimensional Laplacian of Gaussian looks at. Mm, this is the Laplacian of Gaussian in two dimensions. Okay, so and then as you can see here, this anyway, this comes from L axis means dou square G by dou X square. Okay, and then L Y Y means dou square G by dou Y square. This is how L accepts and L Y Y uh, are written. Okay, here. So, and then this is the two dimensional Gaussian. As I mentioned, it will have actually a peak and then dip. Uh, so, if you convolve with different sigma values, so if you start with very small sigma value, then what it highlights, wherever the small changes are happening, all those small changes, it gets highlighted. They get highlighted. You can see here in this. Okay, all small changes small variations further it also highlights this implies that it highlights the fine key points finer key points okay and if i convolve with a little bigger sigma as you can see here this this point you may get highlighted as you can see the uh, details which are slightly uh, of course and nature may get highlighted okay in the bigger scales and in even bigger scale same overall shape for example if you see there is a transition here okay that you can see here okay so such things get highlighted overall you see this whole thing now is just like this okay so in a bigger scale wherever the sigma is high when you are convolving the variations across the parts of the object may get highlighted okay so now uh, how do we select a key point peak in the key um, uh, like which is a key point either a local maxima in fact local maxima or minima in scale space okay so this point if it is maximum or minima across scale one so as i mentioned this is these are three different scales okay so you can consider this case so you can consider this as a maxima or minima across this three cross three cross three. Okay, region in scale space. This is a possible key point because it will it's a possible corner that at this scale. Say for example, if I, I also perform, so please note that this local maxima uh, finding we also perform across different scales, uh, mm, across all scales. So that means. Here, if I bring in, say, here, also I have one more, right? Between, say, this point also will be evaluated, whether is it a local maxima or not, across this one, this one, and this one now. Okay? That means you take a 3 by 3 neighborhood in a scale up, scale down, and here, and then try to see. Similarly, this also will get evaluated from for this one, taking the three consecutive scales. Okay. Hmm. 
know, the scale, the scale and the scale for this point. Hope this is clear. And what does it give? As we mentioned, the um, finer uh, Laplacian of Gaussians highlights the small blocks. Okay, small kernel points. Wider Laplacian of Gaussian or wider uh, with bigger sigmas will highlight the bigger blobs. So this naturally gives us to identify key, uh, key points across different scales. As you can see here, they are also shown with the scale at which they are identified. You can say if I consider two different uh, um, key points identified, as you can see here, this is a, say this is one key point, assume that this is what we take. And this is uh, probably uh, so another uh, um, key point. Okay, and then this is, uh, say, you can take any uh, other things. So you can see that at different, different scales, we are identifying different, different key points. So they are not very clear, okay, here in this image. But you, as you can see, yeah, this is identified at one scale. That means with lower sigma. This is identified at a bigger sigma, the variations here being a key point. This is identified at even a lower sigma, okay, and so on. So at what scale it is identified, you can see that this very small scale, these details, okay? And then this is a, a little even smaller scale. And these are bigger scales, okay, like that. So what, how usually we show in some of these scale space detectors, okay, is that we find out the key points, also demonstrate at what, key, what scale they are detected, okay? By indicating the here, they are indicated by circles. Okay, because it's a blob detector, Gaussian, uh, Laplacian of Gaussian shape looks like a, if you just see actually uniform, uh, like equal value regions, it looks like a blob. Okay, if I, uh, sometimes they also did it with uh, boxes of, a, of different orientations and different uh, sizes for the key points. <coughs> Okay, so this is how the scale space is created, as I mentioned. So with difference of Gaussians. Okay, and this is the derivation that we have discussed. This is called scale normalized Laplacian of Gaussian, uh, which is obtained by difference of Gaussian. Uh, how is that uh, obtained? As you can see here, this in fact comes from the heat equation. Okay, and then as you can see, this is uh, has sigma, one by sigma in square in the denominator. And hence, when you multiply with sigma square in the numerator, what's happening is, this is referred to as scale normalized Laplacian of Gaussian, that's why. Okay, even Laplacian of Gaussian will have one by sigma square in the denominator. Okay, as you can see here very clearly, this is one octave. Okay, first octave they mentioned, next octave and so on. This starts with sigma, k sigma, okay, is gradually increasing the uh, mm, scale of the Gaussian with which we convolve and hence the scale at which the key points are detected. This is detected at a scale of sigma, we can say. This key point, if at all, if there is a maxima here, we can consider that that maxima here is detected at a scale of, okay, k cube sigma. K, key point detected at k cube sigma, key point detected at, okay, at sigma. I like that. We do not only just identify key points, we also indicated which key point we have identified a uh, key point. So how many number of uh, mm, uh, scales has to be there per active? That's a design parameter or a uh, mm, hyper parameter. Similarly, how many number of octaves should be there? And uh, how much K should be uh, there? That means from one scale to another scale, how much uh, higher the sigma value should be? Okay, and then, um, where should we start the next octave? Uh, scale of the next octave. These are all the different hyperparameters. Some of them can be easily uh, understood from the concepts. The remaining all can be put by, they have done uh, experimentation with the different values in a kind of trial and error, but around the uh, possible values, range of values. And then I fix all these aspects. So the scale at which it has to start, anyway, you can decide. Since you have stopped here, we have to start from the scale, which is in low, in when you uh, decrease uh, the when you downsample by two. What happens? The k square k four here is equivalent to k square here. Okay, where k equal to one by root. 
Okay, it's uh, roughly half the sigma. They have taken here this. This is equal to k k power four sigma is equal to sigma by. Uh, hmm. Sorry, root two. K is root two. If we consider k equal to root two, then it is uh, k square sigma is uh, four times. If you consider k equal to root two, it, that that's what they have finally freezed with. Okay, then k power four sigma is equal to how much? Four sigma. Okay, and that is equivalent to when you down sample, it is equal to two sigma, and that's where it started. Okay, like that they have made some of the design parameters. Some of them they have found by uh, different experiments as I mentioned. Uh, how many scales per active and so on. What they have also they will be so seeing or looking at is that when they want to match across different images. Image one and image two, the same object, okay, maybe in different orientation. So this probably, if we consider that this and sorry, this and this are same, okay, assume that just roughly, and then uh, this and this are same, okay, and then this and this are same, okay. If we if this match has to happen, then what what will see this is we have actually four, ten key points here. Okay, at uh, four scales, four different scales, and here say eight key points. At uh, say again four different scales, then we would like to see among these how many match at, at the same scale, the corresponding scale. Say out of these eight uh, to ten, assume that six match. Okay, overall six matches. Okay, match at key points. Out of this, it's matched key points. Four key points match at corresponding scales. Among these four key points, three of them, if you see across, say, match means we know exactly at what key point this uh, has to be high. Okay, and then we try to see whether it has occurred or not. Are we detecting the key point? Say this key point and this key point is same. We know. Assume that given that the object is same, okay. And then we would like to see at what scale is it detected. This is not matching. This is detected. Sorry. Okay, six key points detected at same scale. So matching will come next. Okay, assume that four key points detected at same scale. And then among these four, three key points match across images. That means if I match at the corresponding, say I have detected at sigma, say these four key points. If I see that sigma not two key points, sigma one I have detected one key point, sigma two I detected two key one key point. Okay, assume that this is how the uh, Key point detection has happened. This is how the key point detection has happened in image one. Okay, in image one, and as well as in image two. Okay, if it has say other key points are detected, but they are at different scales. Okay, so in one of them, if this key point is detected at a scale of uh, sigma naught, this scale is detected at sigma three. Okay, so they are not detected at same scale. Okay, so like that, but these are these key these key points detected at same scale. Then among that, if I try to match based on the descriptor around the key point, what happened? Three of them has matched across the images. Then I will try to see how accurate, or like if I consider across five scales, what is the accuracy in matching? Okay, what if I consider across uh, six scales, 
what is the accuracy in matching and so on. And then based on that, I will, we will decide on the number of scales, number of octaves and so on. Okay, so hope matching is by nearest neighbor. So hope this is clear. Then let's uh, discuss on to the next step of how exactly we do the uh, key point localization and as well as the uh, eliminating the outliers among the key points. So far, if you have any question, you can ask. See, as we have seen, difference of Gaussian is what is giving key points. Where x is what? x, y, and sigma now. Okay, y is x, y, and sigma. We are identifying key point. Each key point is identified by at a given location. Okay, x, y, and at a sigma. Okay, because you may identify at scale no, sigma naught, sigma 1, sigma 2, and so on, right? So that's how we are identifying a key point. So, key point is associated by x, y, and sigma, right? Now, this d of d of x, let it be difference of Gaussian. Now, what I want to do is I want to have two things to be done. One is I want to identify whether this key point, whatever I have identified, assume that I have identified through this process of uh, scale space peak selections. Okay, I have identified 1000 key points. By scale space, okay, peak selection. Now, yeah, all these thousand key points are they varied? Are very good key points, or are there uh, some of these key points corresponding to edges among these, and then some some of the key points correspond to as well? I just want to identify. Then what the processor is? So let us see. Actually, the, the, this anyway is this is obtained by difference of Gaussian. We can expand and see where exactly the key point is it correctly localized or not. And let us see at that key point location, is its strength higher or not? The difference of Gaussian is the strength that indicates the key associated with that key point. So difference of Gaussian itself value has to be high, right? So that gives how good a key point is. So to know that, let's expand this, okay, in terms of the uh, uh, tire series. So how do you expand d of x naught? Let there be a um, exact location of key point d x naught. Okay, and then uh, x minus x naught. Do d by do x. Why I'm writing do b d by do x naught? Can some of you tell? Why I'm writing do d by do x naught? Why I can't write actually transpose also I have used here. Oh, so, what's the dimension of dou of x naught, d of x naught? What is d of x naught? You people understood? Okay, this is the difference of Gaussian is this. So, Gaussian dimension is how much? What is the dimension of Gaussian in the sense that is it a vector or is it a scalar or what do you think? At a given location x, y and sigma, if I just uh, compute the Gaussian, okay, is g of x comma y comma sigma, is it a scalar or a vector or what do you think? Hmm? Yeah, any inputs from you are fine. So whatever you feel you can tell. In case of images, it would be a uh, matrix. No, no, at a given point, I'm thinking, right? X, Y, and Sigma is also given. At a given point, it will be scalar. It is a scalar. 
it will be a scalar because at a given point i'm just finding out the uh, gaussian uh, say i take a mask fine but i will find out the gaussian value okay i am substituting only the uh, values of x y and sigma there okay with the mean and uh, other things that are computed from um, from the given uh, values okay so uh, sigma i pre decide what is the sigma i am taking right so based on that i am computing okay so it is a scalar if this is scalar what about d of x not is it a scalar or not yeah it is a scalar this is also one plus one now the question is do d of x not by do x or do d by f x by do x what is dimension of this what do you think is dimension of this do d by do x x is what dimension meanwhile x here as you can see here what is dimension of x Hmm? Three cross one. Three cross one. And hence, do d by do x dimension is how much? This is one dimensional. And this is three dimensional. So, what will be do d by do x dimension? Three dimensional. Three dimensional. Very good. Now, if I want to expand this do d of x around x not, which is a three dimensional thing, I have to consider do d by do x. Say, I need to consider all directions, right? All dimensions. And then x minus x not. This is what dimension again? This is again three dimension, is it not? So I am doing this, okay, in three dimensions. So this is also one cross three vector now, and this is three cross one vector. And hence the overall it is a scalar. Now what is the next term? I uh, will be very happy if uh, some of you are able to tell what is the next term here. I am expanding a vector. Like vector value, uh, a scalar function, but uh, function of several variables. Okay, and try to write its uh, Taylor series expansion, putting all those variables together. So, what should I write here? Any idea? At least tell me what term of d will come here. You can make a guess. Second derivative. Very good. Second derivative of d. So how should I write second derivative of d? Considering partial derivatives, do square d by do x square. Assume that I write. Okay. And what do you think is the dimension of do square d by do x square? It is in sense do by do x of do by do x of d. Do d by do x. Is it not? This is second derivative. What is the dimension of this? This is already three cross one, and then this is anyway. This uh, differentiation is again with three cross one. So dimension of do square by d by do x square will be of dimension. How much? A vector variable differentiated by a vector variable. Three cross three. It will be three cross three. Okay, so this is the dimension here. So do square d by do x square will come here. Fine. It's a matrix now, but I need a scalar here. So what terms will do you think will come? Hmm. Uh. X minus X not. So this is three cross three. This three cross one. Okay, and then one cross three. Overall, it is one cross one, right? And so on. Now all the higher order terms. So now, given this, what we wish to do, we would like to see exact location of X not, where this uh, key point is located. Okay. So we would like to uh, see that we would like to differentiate this. With respect to to the x, okay, x not is what location we have found. We would like to identify the x location where this is maximum. D of x is maximum. Do d by do x, okay. So what we would like to see is 
um, say X naught is the identified location. Scale space. Okay, peak selection. Okay, and then X is the actual maxima location. Okay, around X naught. To identify that, what we do? There, what will happen? We assume that D of X is maximum. Okay, R minimum. So that implies what? What should we do to identify D of X, um, location of D of X maximum? So what can we do now? Obtained by that implies do d or by do x. Okay, for d of x for this expansion. In fact, x minus x naught. Okay, differentiation with respect to x minus x naught. Okay, is equal to zero. So if we differentiate with respect to the deviation, that has to be equal to zero. And now if I, I want to differentiate with respect to delta x, I will write this as, okay, x minus x naught do d of x by do del x. Okay, now this, please note that this del x means, you understand, the deviation in x is equal to zero. So can you differentiate this with respect to delta x and then uh, equate to zero? First three terms let you take. Quickly, I uh, suggest you to do that. Okay, so do d by do del x, I would like to put to zero. So what is the differentiation of this? Can some of you tell? First term, if I differentiate with respect to del x, what is that? Hmm? Zero. 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 What is the second term, if I differentiate with respect to del x? It is in the form x transpose y, I am differentiating with respect to x. Okay, then what is the answer? Huh? By X. X. Do D by do X naught. What is second term here? What is the differentiation of this? The form, what form is this? X transpose MX, right? And then I'm differentiating with respect to, to the X is equal to how much? M plus M transpose into X. M plus M transpose into X. Okay, but if M and M transpose are both, uh, mm, M is a symmetric matrix. Little bit of MX. That's all. Oh, so if for M symmetric, because dou square D by dou X not square is symmetric. Okay, so two times dou square D by dou X not square, whose a matrix into 10 times is equal to zero. This implies what? Now I need delta x. What is this implies? <clears throat> what should I do to get delta x? So I missed something here, right? Writing tiled series expansion. Hmm? Yes or no? One by two will be here. Okay, so I am just writing the answer because there is not much time now. So what is delta x now? Simply you multiply with, you take this, this side, do d by uh, do x naught. Okay, and then this is a matrix. So what should I do? If I want to take the other side, uh, can I write just this by this I can write? Do m. Yeah, m matrix inverse. So this is what is delta x. So which from which you can exact localization of the key point. Okay, this helps us to or better localization of 
key point not only that if the d of now x is greater than some threshold okay then we can say that it is a good key point if d of x is less than threshold it's a weak key point okay it can be thrown out ignore okay so that's how we can localize the key points and also try to see robust key points there is another step in identifying the uh, corner points other than the edge points because the loz also gives in some sense the corner the edge points some of the edge points so let us discuss that in the next class and then probably try to conclude this scale invariant feature transform with orientation assessment in the next class if you have any quick questions you can ask otherwise we will uh, conclude the class here okay. thank you then